An ITV news team has seen firsthand the terror, desperation and relief felt by migrants trying to make the perilous journey across the Mediterranean Sea. We joined rescue crews as they discovered a flimsy inflatable boat packed with people, babies and children among them. They were lucky enough to be rescued. So far this year, more than 2,000 have died making the crossing. Yet when those rescued tell their stories, it becomes clear why so many risk drowning with details of sexual violence and torture that some might find upsetting. Emma Murphy has this special report. Since the earliest days, the Mediterranean has been a trading route between East and West. That trade is now in people, and this is the most dangerous migration route in the world. Saving those in peril is largely down to the charities which patrol these waters, with smugglers sending thousands out to sea and the curtailing of government search and rescue, they are the only real hope for those in distress. Our team, our team, we have visual on the target. It is seven miles ahead of us. Already this year, Médecins Sans Frontières has saved 3,000 people, but almost as many again have perished between North Africa and Italy. The team have just got a shout that two boats are in distress around four miles from here. They're heading straight out now in the hope they can reach them before they begin to sink. For the team, this is about people, not politics. People who are risking death in pursuit of a different life. After 24 hours journeying with the ghosts of those who went before, their shouts mark the moment they realise they won't be joining the dead beneath this water. How difficult must life on land be to risk the dangers of the sea in a boat like this? From what desperation are you escaping to take a child on such a voyage? This is an exodus from lands of war and lands of poverty. More than 100,000 people have made the crossing and reached Italy so far this year. At least 1,500 never got to savour the relief of rescue, and it's still only August. The first step onto the rescue ship the moment those saved dare acknowledge that finally they're in a place of safety. In their hands they carry nothing, the trappings of identity and life left lost or stolen. In their hearts they carry the loves and the lands that they left behind. all too aware how close they came to drowning at sea. It's quite mentally challenging, um, especially the driving, and you always need to be uh, really like in the moment and attentive. Uh, but obviously, um, the moment that I will finally go to deck and see the people that we helped and have finally saved here, I will also feel a big relief to know that they are safe and on their way to a safe place. Please, can you listen to me? Eh? Now you are safe. We are not going back to Libya, we are going to Europe. Their cheers come after years of mistreatment in Libya, captivity, forced labour and violence, the additional cost of the 2,000 euro fare for a place on a smuggler's boat. Had they been picked up by the Libyan Coast Guard, they would have been going back. Sometimes people don't have scars on their skin, but they have a lot of trauma. A lot of people have been either part of interceptions, which means they've already come to sea and they've been intercepted by the Libyan Coast Guards. Therefore, they return to Libya and probably straight into prison again for more torture. I never plan to travel like this. This 17 year old was trafficked from Nigeria five years ago after militants killed her parents and raped her. She was forced into prostitution in Libya for years. The reason why I leave Nigeria is because my dad fought them and they killed him. 
So they raped my mom to death. They also raped me. I was doing prostitute when I got pregnant for my baby. And they asked me to abort the baby. I told them no. They beat me. They forced me, but I did not. I gave birth to the baby. They asked me to circumcise my baby. I, I take the baby and I run. Libya is not safe for us. Even if you walk, they don't pay. They harass you. They use gun. They threaten. Even the little one you have, they take from you. So that's how I struggle. I struggle. And I, I, I decide to enter this water. Around 70% of the women MSF rescue tell of rape and sexual violence. So too many men. Yusuf fled war in Mali. He tells of being shot in Libya, of African people being sold as slaves, and men forced to watch as women were gang raped. I saw it. I saw them raping mothers in front of their daughters, their husbands, in front of everyone. People were beaten until they vomited blood. You can't protect your brothers and you can't fight back because they have guns. At six months old, baby Bless is the youngest of the 168 people rescued. I am from Cameroon. I took this journey because of war in my country. It must have been a big decision. It was risky, but you know, nothing comes for easy. We just had to, because I, I just think that was the best option. Leaving the crisis, I like leaving my Cameroon to save myself. The MSF teams offer medical and psychological support. It is terrible. It's up, it doesn't matter whether you are a male or a female. Uh, they have physical abuse, they have psychological abuse, and they have uh, sexual violent abuse uh, at the same time. In Africa, the people who are encouraging this are people who are benefiting from smuggling these people. They are only telling them how good a life that they will have in Europe. Some of those crossing the Med are driven by poverty. Frank left Gambia five years ago. Twice he was caught crossing and returned to prison in Libya. Anyone you see in this scene know that he lacks something. Like even, you know, poverty, I can say, because me, I'm a poor man. These survivors are entering Europe at a moment when immigration is an emotive issue and nations are hardening their stance on arrivals. That doesn't deter them. What would you say to people in Europe who say we don't want people like you? I, I, I would say to them to understand and to be more human. I know it's not easy. Everybody wants to come Europe, Europe. But not everyone is coming. It's only people who cannot take it anymore. On this mission, 168 people were brought to safety on board the Geo Barents, MSF's rescue ship. 117 were under 18. Those rescued have different experiences but shared hope. Many of them just want to sleep in peace. It's so simple, right? For uh, me and you, it's so simple. But to them, even though sleeping a light with peace is very difficult. During the days they spend on this boat, those who saved them seek to offer the kind of care that hasn't been offered in years and time to prepare for what lies ahead. What we want to provide is the opportunity uh, to see that uh, there are people that can support, support them uh, and that they are not alone. Uh, they, can, uh, they can trust uh, us uh, to, uh, to first hear their stories and then if we can support in any way. Italy is now challenging the work of teams like MSF, ordering them to dock in ports far from search zones, reducing the time they have to save life and increasing the cost of missions. On a personal level, I'm extremely frustrated. Uh, I've witnessed here stuff that I don't think anyone should witness. Uh, arriving too late to a boat, uh, having people that disappeared, having people dying in front of you because you're a few hours late, because no one else was there to answer to the distress call. No matter what is your position and what is going to be the future of those people, uh, this is just not acceptable to leave people dying at sea. Politicians have accused them of acting as a taxi service to Europe, even though they only transport a tiny percentage of arrivals. It's quite ridiculous to think that uh, you are 13 years old, uh, your family is completely is all killed, 
you raise some money, you take your backpack, you abandon your school, your house and everything, you do the journey, you raped over three and four borders, then you arrive in Libya, you spend in Libya months and months and months under detention, violence, rape, and they ask you money, more money, all of this because there is a ship at sea. And so finally these people have reached the continent they risked their lives for. They'll now be processed by the Italian authorities. In this moment at least, they believe they are the lucky ones. For a few days, this ship offered a place of peace and safety. Their search now is for sanctuary. They were saved from near certain death in the water, but ahead is a very uncertain future. Well, Emma joins us from um, Brindisi tonight. Um, Emma, some horrendous and heartbreaking accounts. Um, what happens to those uh, migrants who featured in your reports? Well, the people that we filmed with had taken off the boat when it arrived in Brindisi and they were moved to a holding centre where they would be fingerprinted, have their photographs and their personal details taken. There may have been time for some to explain their situation. It's very likely most said at that point that they would like to seek asylum. Because the situation here is so acute, the holding centre in this town is actually full. So they put them all onto buses and move them to different parts of Italy in order to house them. The men would be held in these holding centres. The women and children would be taken by charities and other support groups in order to give them a slightly more caring environment to be um, looked after in. Yeah, and uh, Italy's facing a very uh, serious situation with the number of migrants who are now arriving. Yes, the figures here are very, very high, higher than they've been in a number of years. And that's partly why there are these problems now for the NGOs who are carrying out the rescues. I suppose it doesn't take a nautical genius to realise that fewer rescues at sea mean fewer people being brought to land. And when I was speaking to the MSF team, they were telling me that being sent to further ports than they normally use is costing them so much money. It's the equivalent of 30,000 polio vaccinations that they would use in other missions. So it just gives you an indication of how far reaching the effects of this situation are, not just on those traveling, but on those receiving them and also on those in lands very far away. Emma in Brindisi for us this evening. Thank you.